You've been yelling at that spoon for over half an hour now. You do not have telekinetic superpowers. I know, but we only use 10% of our brain. The other 90% has got to be for moving spoons. <laughs> Move! Move! <laughs> oh, you're right. I don't have telekinetic superpowers. I'm going to go to the store and get myself a donut. That sounds like a much better activity. Excuse me. Oh, uh, water boy, could you uh, drop one of those in the dispenser for me? Drop this. Oof. <laughs> Mitch, whoa, 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 Mitch, over here, 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 Mitch, put it in here, here. Oh, you're ready with the water. <laughs> you're obviously new to this job. Let me tell you something that will help you keep it. I am Mitch Lowen, vice president of this network, and I am perfectly capable of picking up that phone and having you fired. And I'm perfectly capable of picking up that phone and beating you senseless with it. <laughs> oh, you want to play tough, huh? Uncle Duke! <laughs> You just deliver the water and lose the attitude, okay? Well, I got a delivery for you. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, now, hold on a second here. We talk with our mouths around here, not with our hands. Why don't you just uh, mosey on out of here? Mosey? What kind of idiot says mosey? Hoss, Ben, little Joe, you know, the whole Cartwright family. <laughs> uh, well, I think you just better leave. Make me. Oh, well, see, I, I can't make you do anything, but what I can do is suggest a whole variety of options, and what you decide to do is your decision. Well, maybe my decision is going to be to put you in the hospital. Before you hear the other options? Well, here's one. How about I call security and have you thrown out? Make me. Well, now, you see, that didn't make any sense at all, my friend. <laughs> Boy, you are angry. Why don't you come over here? We'll have a nice, cool glass of water together, and you can tell me what's troubling you. I'll tell you what's troubling me. You're troubling me. Now make me. Hey, don't push him. There he is, the big mean one. What's <laughs> all this about a water man running amok? Make me. Now, why are you pushing him? Simon, give this man a forearm smash across the nose and a good throw down the stairs. I'll testify he tripped. <laughs> My fist is about to testify to your face. Mitch, be a good lad and fetch my samurai sword. And then call for the janitor. Now, wait a second. Let's let cool heads prevail here, my friends. I'll tell you who's going to prevail here, my friend. Did you ever realize that every time you say something, you start your next sentence with the last thing someone just said? Well, I'm about to start my next sentence with the last thing someone just said on your face. I can't find your sword. Oh, Mitch, then get my bull whip. It's right next to the blowgun. <laughs> Hey, hey, what do you think you're doing? Carl, I'm controlling this. Simon, let me do it. Listen, Look, no one... Look, I'll handle Simon, this. Simon, get out of the way. Listen, nobody pushes my little brother around. That's it, Carl. You hold him while I flay the hide off his back. <laughs> Ow! Oh. Sorry, Mitch. Uh, okay, stick figure, you're off the hook for now. But you ever want to settle this mano and mano, you'll meet me alone sometime. Well, I don't speak French, but whatever you just said, <laughs> I'll meet you at 6 o'clock. You just name the place. Muddy's Bar, Pier 4, midnight. Well, you pencil me in. I'll call by 6 to confirm. <laughs> See you later, Carl. All right, where are you going? 
I'm going down to Muddy's to see that guy. Whoa, whoa, and whoa! What do you mean you're going down to Muddy's to see that guy? You know something, Carl? At one point in time, every pit bull was a lovable little puppy. They didn't grow up mean. They weren't born that way. Somebody trained them to be like that. So I'm going to go down there, have a little talk with Vic, and try and help him get in touch with his inner puppy. Uh -huh, listen to me. You're not going down there. Oh, yes, I am. I've already called and confirmed. I don't care. Listen, this isn't about you, OK? It's about me. Your whole life, you've gotten yourself into situations that I have to bail you out of, and I'm the one who constantly ends up getting hurt. Name a time. OK, you're two, I'm three. Mom takes us to the park. We're in our stroller. You pull a dog's tail. He growls at you. I throw my Hot Wheels at him. Next thing I know, Mom's pulling my head out of his mouth. You're petting him. <laughs> Isolated incident. Uh, Coney Island, you're six, I'm seven. Mean clown. You win a stuffed animal, I lose my front teeth. Yeah, but that's not fair. I mean, the clown put me up on his lap before I had a chance to tell him I was going to get sick from the Ferris wheel. Last week, you're 27, I'm 28. We're at the Museum of Modern Art. You're straightening out a picture, I get arrested. All right, let me try one. Last week, I'm at the zoo all by myself. I gotta get close to the gorilla cage just so he can see me signing. Zookeeper comes, tries to pull me away. Gorilla reaches through the bars, grabs and breaks both his arms. You weren't there? No incident. Uh, Simon, I do not want to be there to battle the next gorilla you try to sign to. Well, that's good, Carl, because I don't remember inviting you. Excuse me. Let me explain to you something. I'm your big brother. I don't need an invite. Jumping into situations, no matter how painful, is part of my job. Now, if you really want to go out, Simon, I will go change my clothes. We'll go down to a normal bar. We'll talk to some girls. You know, we did this every night last week. How many times do I have to watch you get slapped? <laughs> You're not going down there. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not. All right, then prepare to look really stupid. <laughs> Move! <laughs> Move! Telekinetic powers or no, I'm not moving. All right, fine. I'll wait till next week till he comes back into the office. Fine, at least I'll be there to protect you. I don't need you to protect me. You sure do. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not coming with you. Nobody's asking. You're on your own. Yeah, well, don't wait up. Count on that. I asked mother for a hamster. <laughs> Simon, I am not staying. I'm not asking you to. <laughs> oh, my God. This is much worse than I thought. Yeah, well, it's not the type of place you'd come to do a shampoo commercial, but... Now, listen. I want you to keep your mouth shut. Don't talk to anybody. Don't make eye contact. Just look at the floor and don't call any attention to yourself, all right? All right, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> hey, look at that, a dollar. Hey, did anyone lose a dollar? I just found a dollar on the ground. Oh, rock! Oh, You see what I'm talking about? That's what life is worth in a place like this, a buck. Now shut your blower, sit down, and try to make yourself invisible, all right? You try. I don't even know how to move a spoon yet. <laughs> what do you have? Oh, nothing. We're just here to, uh, to talk to someone. If you don't drink, you're gonna have to pay the cover charge. Cover charge? Is there a show? If you don't pay the cover charge, there will be. <laughs> uh, I'll have a beer, please. Yo, this is uh, quite a nice looking place you got here. Are, uh, are you Muddy? Muddy was my mom. My name's Strap. So if your middle name was Les and your last name was Bra, you'd be a strapless bra. Simon. <laughs> Just Strap. Like Cher, only Strap. <laughs> I get it kind of like uh, Madonna. No! Like shit! <laughs> Watch that mouth. Do you see what I'm talking about? Don't talk to anyone, Simon. Oh, come on. 
Come on, Carl. This is just a bar full of ordinary people. C no, come here. Not. Look at this. Come on, right here. Oh. Hello there, Klingon. <laughs> uh, hi, my name's Simon Hempel, and this is my brother Carl, and this is our first time here at the wonderful Muddy's. And, well, we just wanted to say hello to you friendly folk. Oh. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Don Creel. You're also the guy with little chunks of corn and broccoli in your beard. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know you. You're Iron Dawn, the, the human vice. I, I saw your show over at the garden in the spring. You're fantastic. Yeah, that's me. Oh, Carl, you got to see this guy's show. I actually saw this guy. He took a VCR and crushed it down, turned it into a transistor radio. Oh. Don, I just want to say it's a pleasure to meet you. You're a real star to me. <laughs> well? <laughs> Look at this. Tickets to the auto show. Hey, are you performing? Yeah, I'm gonna crush a Buick. Oh. <laughs> Great meeting you, kids. Oh. <laughs> you. Look, uh, I wasn't so bad, you know. I mean, he was, seemed like a nice guy, and sure, a little later in life, I'm gonna need lower back surgery, but... <laughs> Everyone inside's, you know, basically nice, and that's why I'm gonna talk to Vic. Well, maybe you're right, you know? Maybe I'm just a little too cynical about people. I'm, I'm a good guy, and sometimes I can kind of be a hothead. See, there you go. Bad people do good things, good people do bad things, you know? And I think it's important that that's why I talk to Vic. Vic? Tall guy? Short temper? Starts all these sentences with whatever you said last? Yeah, that's the guy. We're gonna meet him here around midnight. Fix out of prison! <laughs> Okay, Simon, let's go. The toughest guys in the world just ran screaming out of this bar because they heard Vic, I'm sure he's nice on the inside, just got let out of prison. They didn't let him out of prison. They asked him to leave. <laughs> now, I can't believe there's nothing I can do to help soothe the rage that's burning in that poor man's soul. A monastery full of monks couldn't. <laughs> that's what he went to prison for. He was delivering water to a Trappist monastery got into one of his moods, he'd beat the tar out of every monk in the place. <laughs> the little fellas had to break their vows of silence just to press charges. The guy beats up monks? We're gonna die! <laughs> We're not gonna die, we're gonna run. Let's go. Oh, boy, that, now, that, that's pathetic. You two are just a couple of miserable cowards. You make me sick! One of you lock up for me? <laughs> Who's here? Vic! You're not closing, are you? No, just opening up. Boy, being back in this dump really steams my clams. Did you hear that? His clams are steaming. I told you this was a stupid idea. Look, it's your fault we're here. How is this my fault? You're my big brother. You should have stopped me. You told me not to. Yeah, but you listen to me? What kind of big brother are you? Simon, I am not taking the blame for this. Look, you said it was your job to protect me, so there he is. Go to work. You don't want to be late on your first day. <laughs> well, well, well. What happened to your good people, bad people, everybody's the same on the inside theory? That's all it is. It's just a theory. I didn't expect this guy to be Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> All right, look, I say we argue later. Right now, I'm suggesting we run out of here like a couple of girls, all right? <laughs> right behind you, sis. Here's your drinks. Uh, we didn't order any more drinks. Yes, you did. Oh. <laughs> You're not going to leave me here alone with that maniac. Look, God, I'm afraid we're going to have to. You're the guys that came in here to see him. We came in to see a different Vic. Uh, our Vic is a, is, a, is a small man, a jockey. Yeah. You know, th this isn't even the right Muddies. We were supposed to meet at the Muddies in the city. You know, Muddies on the grain. Look, when this guy gets a couple of drinks in him, he's going to want to fight somebody. And I don't want to be the only car in the showroom. 
Well, that's not our problem, Strap. No, your problem is the minute you stand up to leave, I'm going to yell, hey, Vic, look, monks. <laughs> what a horrible man you are. Well, there goes my everybody's good on the inside theory blowing up right in my face. Now, listen. <laughs> As soon as somebody else comes in here, you guys can leave. Until then, enjoy your beverages, and thanks for choosing Muddies. <laughs> Well, you know, it's been over an hour we've been sitting in here and no one's come in. You know why no one's come in? It's because all those little freaky guys that used to be in here told the entire city of New York that Vic, the monk basher, is over at Muddy's. Oh, here's some more bad news. I've been sitting over here thinking about the Lucy show. I've been thinking about all of them, the one with Fred and Ethel and that Ricky Ricardo guy. And I'm thinking, unless we get ourselves a Congo drum and a freaky little Contessa's outfit, we're gonna have to fight our way out of this dump. That is bad news. Unfortunately, you're right. Yeah, well, I know it's gonna be scary, and I know I'm not gonna be much help because I've never been in a fight in my life. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do my best, and I'm gonna try as hard as I can, and, and that's not all bad, bad news. Yeah? Well, you may not think so when you hear the lead story. Simon, I haven't been in a fight since Joanna Carmesino knocked the wind out of me in ninth grade. <laughs> Well, I guess we're back to the running plan. Yeah, I'm good with that. So this is the final hour where Butch and Sundance. Well, pick somebody else. Those guys got slaughtered. All right, how about Captain and Tennille? All right, Muskrat. <laughs> now, listen to me. The five yards to the door is the easy part. Then there's 100 yards to the subway. That's going to be tough. You ready? We're going to go on three. All right, but before we go, I just want to say one thing. What? I love you. I love you too, Simon. Now remember, don't look back, don't stop for anything, and run like the wind. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> well, 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 what do we have here? Run! Not so tough without Big Brother to protect you. You don't think I didn't see you the minute I walked in here? Boy, is my face red. It's gonna be. Hey, Ladybug. Hey, elephant ears. No, I mean, there's a Ladybug on your jacket right here. You know these are considered to be good luck. Huh. 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 Okay? <laughs> no, no, you're not talking your way out of this one, my friend. Let me explain to you how things work. Big people protect little people. They don't beat them up, they don't pick on them, and they especially don't eat them, all right? <laughs> what were you, raised by a, a family of lizards? <laughs> made me bite my tongue and it hurts. Oh, really? All right, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Not to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, that's a little better. Why are you uh, so mean anyhow, Vic? I don't know. I guess I... I don't have many friends. Well, why is that? Well, people don't like me. And I hate them for it. I don't like it because you're me. You see? It's a vicious cycle. Oh, now, now, Vic. 
Vic, come on now, take the first step, Vic. Take the first step. <laughs> the one night I didn't bring the camcorder. <laughs> I saw a guy coming after you. Oh. Wow, it's, it's, it's good you're working on your self-control, but we'll have to work on the mindless violence thing. Carl, are you okay? I'm fine, Simon. This is right where I should be. This is, stop it. <laughs> this is my life, you know? This is what I do. This is my purpose. Now do me a favor. Pick up my eyeball, I think it rolled over there. <laughs> Well, good night, fellas. Hey, good night. Hey, good night, Vic. Good night, Straff. Hey, Carl, don't you want to say good night to Vic and Straff? No, I don't want to say good night to Vic and Straff. One of them hit me, and the other one helped me get hit. Hey, come on, Carl. Take the high road, huh? I can't see the high road. My eye is swelling <laughs> shut. Oh, hang on one second. Hey there, Heather. This is no place for a little lady to be hanging out. Hey, Carl, I think I finally found you some good luck. Move. Move. Simon, give it up. Stop trying to protect me. Move. <laughs> Move. Here, try this one. Get fucked!